Okay, so you know, it's human nature that when we have these exciting dreams, when life starts getting rough, one of the first go-tos is, well, let's not do it. You know, a lot of people do that. So what we want to do is recognize that there's this self-defeating thinking cycle. Sometimes I call it the monkey mind cycle. To where we develop some problematic perceptions and beliefs about ourselves and the world and other people. Like a conclusion somebody might get is, I'm a loser, right? Have you ever heard people come in feeling like that? I'm a loser? So they have this conclusion, I'm a loser. I can remember being in that place. You know, I'm not good enough. I'm a loser. This is too hard. It doesn't matter what the conclusion is. When we have one of these mistaken beliefs or conclusions, we go out into the world and look for evidence. We look for anything that's going to support our conclusion. And then we block out anything that's going to challenge that conclusion. And then we start showing up in ways that further support that. So we, if we feel like we're a loser, we start showing up with losing behavior. We fall back on commitments. We don't keep our word. We don't do things we say we're going to do. And then we invite other people to reinforce this with us because we surround ourselves with enablers or people that have just as serious a problem as we do. And that reinforces this self-defeating cycle. And even though we may be experiencing very painful reality, we won't let go. We just won't stop letting go of this painful reality because we have this belief. We have this conclusion. That is denial. When I work with someone and I've noticed that they're stuck into one of these conclusions, I'll get a blank sheet of paper and I'll put a big mark like this in one part of the circle on a paper. And I'll say, this is your mistaken identity, your mistaken belief. This is what you're so fixated on that nothing else, there's nothing else in your universe. That's all there is. And what you miss out on, though, is all the other possibilities. Hundreds, thousands of impossibilities. The reality is that human beings have hundreds, if not thousands, of thoughts going through our heads every day. We can only focus on a finite number of those. And it's the ones we focus on that determines our outcomes. So I want to have people start focusing on some other things. Let's start focusing on something more positive and interesting. And to do this, we need to develop some breathing space. We need to have some breathing space. You know, the premise here is that the beliefs and perceptions or conclusions lead to the thoughts. Thoughts lead to an emotional response. The combination of thoughts and emotions lead to an urge or impulse to do something about it. And then we hit the point of no return, I call the decision point. This is the point of no return, because once you pull that trigger, the bullet's gone, you can't call it back. The behavior's there. For every action, there's a social reaction. So we need to learn how to have breathing space so we can make better decisions. I'm going to talk more about that this afternoon in the relapse piece. Now, here I'm going to do this particular painful reality exercise exactly like I would do it for a room full of treatment people, people in early treatment. Because I want to make a point with painful reality. It's part of being human on this planet. We all have painful realities. You know, there's different areas. I'm going to list four primary areas. So sometimes, anybody in here ever got diagnosed with something you didn't like hearing the diagnosis? You know, some kind of painful health condition? Uh, how about anybody here? Work problems. Any work problems? Career problems in here? Okay. And I know there's no money problems in here, right? Now, I, I, I hesitate to bring this last one up because I'm sure nobody in this room has ever experienced any of these problems. Relationship problems, the R word. So, you know, as human beings, we all have different painful realities. You know, the painful reality... You know, I can, it's so, I'm going to share the most vivid painful reality I experienced. It was in 1976. I was still living in Colorado at the time. It was the middle of the night, and there was this loud banging on the door, and the doorbell was ringing. I was living in Pueblo, Colorado, and I went to the door, and the Pueblo Police Department was there. There was two officers, and the looks on their faces kind of confused me because they weren't angry. They looked like pity. And one of them I even went to high school with, Richard. 
And Dick said to me, he says, Steve, I have some horrible news for you. You've got to come with us and identify your brother's body. And I went immediately into lockdown. Okay, So that was my reaction to the painful reality. I want you to just think for just a second. What is a current, recent, painful reality that you've experienced? Just jot down a title for it. Mine would be my brother's suicide. So just jot that down, your painful reality, just the title. Now, as human beings, we have ways to protect ourselves. You know, the body has an immune system that protects us from germs. Well, the mind has an immune system, too. And part of the mind's immune system is the defense ne mechanism we call denial. There's five primaries, we believe. There's five primary ways we protect ourselves. One is avoidance. We avoid thinking or talking about the painful reality with the mistaken belief that it'll go away. What I did with those police officers was I went into total denial, shock denial. No, you made a mistake. I was with him last night. He was fine. He would never do something like that. I'll come with you. I called my other brothers. I'm the oldest of nine brothers. And meet over at Greg's house. Well, unfortunately, eventually the denial broke. But I needed that defense at first. Now, the next mechanism is the most common of all 12 that I'm going to talk about today. And that's minimization. We see a problem as less serious than it really is. And then my favorite out of all 12 is this one. Rationalizing. Intellectualizing. Justifying. And if I have a good reason, my wife shouldn't be mad at me for my behavior. If I have a good reason. Boy, does that cause problems in our household. And then the last of the five is blaming. It's not my fault. It's somebody else's. You know, it's the police officer's fault. It's the judge's fault. It's my wife, my husband's fault. It's somebody else's fault. Never about me. So thinking about this, your painful reality, in the real world, these play in clusters. They play as teams. But there's always the captain of the team. My captain of my team is usually rationalizing. That's my go-to. So just think for a minute. What is your go-to for your painful reality? How does it help you? And if you stick with it too long, how could it hurt you? And just turn to the person next to you real quickly and share that. Which one do you use, how it helps you, and how it hurts you? One minute to share with your partner.